Okay, good morning. It's working. Great. Good morning, everybody, on this beautiful Monday morning. Um, just wanted to give a little fun fact for those who might know, maybe they don't know. Um, the groundhog did see his shadow uh, last week, so we will be hopping into spring season. Yes, I'm so excited. Anyways, I wanted to... Um, uh, introduce our chapel speaker today. He is the head of the Biblical Counseling Undergrad Department, Dr. Luther Smith. I'll help you. Thank you very much. Um, Beja, where'd you go? Hey, hi. I'm going to need that microphone. Thank you very much. I would uh, uh, thank you again for um, allowing me to grace your presence, but no coffee. So I don't have any coffee this morning. It's not going to spill. Um, I would like to uh, invite my guests. Um, up here, um, if they could please, the four of them, uh, make their way up here. I'm going to give them some brief introductions. Not too long, though. Um, and then uh, we, will, uh, we will get straight away. Of course, this is the Biblical Counseling Assembly. Um, every now and then we have a chance to showcase um, a particular uh, department. And uh, I guess I'm up to bat here. So there it goes. Um, I want to start um, here uh, to my right. Um, this woman go, is uh, Carolyn Asher. She works for Abundant Life, and she is a graduate of our master's program here. Matter of fact, one of our first graduates who completed our program for licensure, which is amazing. Um, to the right of her is, I call her Maddie Madeline. That's my name for her. She's Madeline Clark. Uh, she is getting ready to graduate with her degree in biblical counseling and is, has some crazy idea that she's going into the master's. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. that's, she's, 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 she's all committed. She's all in. So thank you guys for coming. And then, of course, uh, to the left of me is Nora Giannetti. Is that the... Oh, <laughs> Um, she is actually an interdisciplinary student, so she has, uh, a, uh, she's pursuing her degree in business and counseling, um, which will give a unique take. And then, uh, of course, we have the boy, the, the, the man here, the boy, Josiah Hackman, um, who is... Why, why, are you, why are you teasing like that, man? Yeah. The, there you go. Well, of course, you could tease. I don't care. Um, um, he is uh, part of pastoral studies and is doing um, some classes in our department. So I kind of wanted to get a broad spectrum of individuals, those who are in the department, those who have graduated, of course, and have gone on, um, and those who uh, are kind of walking alongside of us uh, in this department as well. Um, so... I will go ahead and hold this mic, and whoever wants to uh, go ahead and speak, um, I'm going to give you some questions, and then uh, we'll go ahead and talk and have a discussion here. So um, the first question I want to ask is, uh, of course, um, we exist essentially to equip you guys, right, to connect with individuals who need care. That's kind of the idea. So. Um, Right now, what are some of the lessons that you have learned or that you're learning from the program, um, biblical counseling, that have impacted you personally? Um, not necessarily your practice, but you as a person. And anyone could go, or I can ball and tell you. I guess I can start. All right. Um, so being a pastoral major, I guess I, I'm taking two, three classes from the biblical counseling department. And I guess the main thing that I've learned in a couple of my classes is just the importance of asking good questions. 
Um, because it's one thing to tell somebody, oh, this is the problem with you, but it's a completely different thing to have them realize what that problem is for themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, it's, it's a simple thing, but it's something that I'm trying to put into practice with, I work at um, House of Hope, so working with teenagers and trying to put into practice asking questions that are gonna have them think instead of giving them the easy way out and saying, this is your problem, fix it. Mm -hmm. um, has just, that's something that I'm trying to put into practice and learn, so. Very cool, excellent. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I've learned so far, especially uh, I'm at the very beginning of my classes, so I'm still new to the department, but a lot of learning about identity. Um, I think it's sometimes used pretty cliche, but really looking at well, what does it actually mean to have an identity in Christ, and then how does that interact with every other part of our life? Like everything that you do reflects what you put your identity in, and if it's in Christ, then that's going to reflect, and then that transfers to how you interact with other people, especially counselees. Carlin, what say you? you? You're kind of outside and, yes. and uh, a little bit, so let's, let's say you. How's um, this? So kind of what I've learned is uh, don't seek counseling too late um, because usually people don't come in until they are having really major issues. Um, something I learned, I look back and I think, boy, I wish I would have had some of these skills that I've learned in classes and that I'm doing now in session. And so what I do now is when I have, I usually work with girls and women, and so what I do now is when a girl comes in and I see that there's not a connection or there's a, um, a breach in the mother or the father's uh, communication, listening, um, whatever skill it may be, uh, I teach them that and I, I look back on my own life and I say, oh man, I wish I would have had these skills when my kids were in the house. So. Don't wait to seek uh, counsel. That's pretty much the lesson I've learned. Yeah. That's really good. Um, I would say my answer to that um, piggybacks off of what uh, she was saying over there just a minute ago. But the biggest thing I would say that I've learned is that healing happens in the context of reality. And that um, it is, I now, what I, I, I do kind of consultation work with parents, and uh, which is kind of weird for a 21 year old, I gotta be honest. Um, but the reason why I can is because I know that when I'm talking to them, I can acknowledge reality. And sometimes that means I have to have a really hard conversation about where mm. they're at and how their actions and behaviors have affected their own child. But because I know that reality is the perspective of God and that that is what he established, I know I can do it with confidence because I know that that's going to be the first place the healing happens is in the context of reality. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. Um, <laughs> uh, Josiah, uh, a specific uh, kind of question for you. Since you're not necessarily on the track of biblical counseling, you're doing pastoral ministry, there's been a lot of uh, um, kind of discussions and basically um, grievances from counsel, counselees that have gone to see pastors that have been very insensitive concerning some of the struggles and challenges that they, you know, the counselee comes and faces. How do you suppose taking these three classes within the program kind of enhances your training as a pastor or a future pastor going uh, into that particular vocation? I think it almost changes, taking these classes almost changes your perspective of the people that you're counseling. Um, and you see them more piggybacking off what kind of they were talking, piggybacking off their piggyback. But um, <laughs> on seeing them for who they are as in an identity perspective versus, um, versus more of like a almost, not works, but almost like a, like seeing them for their problems, mm -hmm. seeing them who they are in Christ, because that's like almost the first thing we talk about in biblical counseling and in an introduction to biblical counseling is identity. Who who are you? Um, that it's it's changed my perspective. Instead of seeing people for their problems, um, instead of seeing them for who they are. So these classes have just kind of like 
helped me to see people in a different perspective, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, and then definitely from a pra pastor's perspective, that's like the majority of what you're doing as a pastor <laughs> is counseling in one aspect or another. So um, very, very good. I don't know if that answered yeah, your yeah, question. Yeah, that, that's excellent. That's a, thank you very much, Josiah. Um, now, broaching the subject, um, one of the things that us counselors are really good at is self-care. <laughs> We're not. Um, what do you guys do to care for yourselves? Because we, you know, I've taught and I know that you, you guys are kind of working in various aspects that, you know, if you don't care for yourself, you're not going to be available to care for anyone else, right? So, and I know you just started, so you might want to get, you might want to do this now, all right? And don't wait. Um, what are some of your uh, things that you do uh, for, for self-care? I'd like to start with you on, um, yes, yes, on the end, and then we'll work forward from there. So my, this has been a struggle for me for a long time, <laughs> and I'm not, I've not been very good at this, mm -hmm. um, but I was taking the um, master's level uh, theology class, and Dr. or Doug Geiger was talking about self-care, and he mentioned how self-care is like so many different domains, and it's, so mu it's about so much more than just taking a bubble bath and reading a book, which can be helpful and I do enjoy, but what I realized was I have to take account of how healthy I am in all domains of my life. And he included, he went as far as including um, financial health and um, your health as far as your relationships within your family and all those different aspects of your life and making sure that those are healthy. And so for me, one mm. thing I've done recently is I've been more intentional about Ma maintaining my finances. And it's amazing how much less stressed you are when you pay more attention to those things. And I'm just being honest, you know. Uh, and then also, you know, eating healthier and making paying more attention to what I'm fueling my body with as well has a huge effect on how healthy I feel like I've been. And I feel like I've been even just so much less stressed doing just those two things. Um, and those things I would never have domained as like self-care before. So. That's kind of where I'm at right now. And it's a learning process. I don't think anyone's going to completely get there. And as counselors, it's really challenging for sure. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's kind of understood. But the first thing I think of is um, uh, every morning when I wake up, uh, just having that time with the Lord in the Bible, getting refreshed, getting full, um, prayer time, uh, being before the Lord, you know, presenting uh, anything that uh, you feel like, you know, you need to bring before him and um, seeking his count, his counsel because he is our counselor. Um, then the next thing I feel like uh, for me is connection. And just like you say, it's domains, different domains. Well, that's one for me. So connection with my kids. Uh, I'm an empty nester, so I have no one at home, but, uh, it's, but it's my kids that ground me and, uh, that's a part of my self-care, just feeling, you know, that love from them, me giving love. Um, and another one would be the physical part, which is eating right and um, versus not eating right. Because I know we all can tell when we don't eat right and how we feel. And then when we do eat right and how we feel about that and supplements and exercise and um, just all the physical part of that. So. Um, I've found over the years that really within anything that I do, I'm not actually taking care of myself if I'm not acknowledging who I was created by and why I'm doing what I'm doing. If I'm not acknowledging that I'm spending time with friends or working out in order to glorify God with what he's given me, then there's no rest in that. And I think that that has been like on all facets of self-care, um, whatever part you want to look at, that's just the one thing that I have to come back to and I really unrested and not at peace if I don't remember those things and what I'm trying to do to take care of myself. Um, I guess one thing, the main thing for me with self-care is discipline um, in all areas of my life. So on a lot of times you can think of discipline as, oh, you're beating yourself down. No, um, creating good, healthy habits is extremely important. And I've noticed for me, this semester versus last semester, um, 
when you start to create habits in one area of your life, I've noticed that it starts to carry over into other areas of my life as well. So like right now I'm doing an intense um, workout plan with Ronnie and Ty, wherever he is, but um, getting up early, um, controlling what comes into my body, um, working out, that all has helped me to develop more of a discipline, and then that carries also into relationships, um, placing more of an emphasis on my relationship with God, studying his word, um, and doing that more as a habit, and creating a habit of self-care and discipline. So that's kind of my thing at the moment. But How early do you get up in the morning? Uh, 6.30. Oh, I beat you. Yeah. yeah. I get a five, brother. It beats ten. Yeah, I'm at the gym. I'm ready to go. Um, <laughs> did, uh, did, uh, usually, um, um, particularly in our department in biblical counseling, I get a bad rap for being a taskmaster teacher. Okay. <laughs> now, I didn't say that, but I know that there are people in this room that think that. Not any of you guys, of course, right? Um, when you guys started, hey, was that, did you guys? What? What? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, okay, okay, good. Um, do you, did you guys have, before you came into the program, any fears or apprehensions, right? Or did you just come, you know, diving 12 feet, 12, 12 feet in the pool? Um, um, let's, uh, again, let's start with Maddie Madeline over here, because I see you nodding your head, so regale us. Yeah, so this is actually, I'm going to put it on the ground. It's actually kind of funny. Um, <clears throat> so when I started, I feel like I had two perspectives. I either, my of counseling, either it was fully biblical and we did nothing with psychology, or it was fully psychology and we did nothing with biblical. And so I, t I got into the program having it be called biblical counseling with a professor who has a degree in psychology, hoping that maybe I'd get both. And in maybe one of our first couple, my first couple classes, um, I remember hearing him talk about the Bible for three classes straight, maybe even four, and talking about the, the brain and different context of the people. And, well, actually, he didn't really get too much into the brain. Now, I, now in hindsight, he kind of did, but I didn't think so at the time. Um, and so I remember asking him, because at the end of every class, he says, okay, so tell me one thing that you learned from class. And I said, well, I learned X, Y, Z, but when are we going to start talking about psychology? And he goes, oh, Maddie, Madeline, we've been talking about psychology the whole time. And, and then I got so mad. I think I <laughs> talked to a couple of my friends afterwards, and I was like, I don't know what he's talking about. We, are, we have not talked about psychology one time. I want to talk about the brain. And now that I've gone through all of this school and all of the classes that we go through at, Cal at, at Calvary in the biblical counseling department specifically, I have realized so fully how much you literally cannot take away the mind of a person when you are tending to the person in the context of ministry. And we were talking about psychology from the very first class because we were talking about man and we were talking about the mind of man and talking about transformation and the context that we're in, which is the context of God and the context of sin and the context of all these different theologies we learn at Calvary. And that all has to do with psychology. And then we also throw in the science of how the brain actually functions and the neurons that wire together, fire together. And so all of it is psychology. So I was, I was definitely apprehensive when I came in because I was like, I was burned by the pastor who tried to give counsel and it wasn't helpful. And then also I was deeply scientific person. And so realizing that those two things don't just mesh well together, like we're not integrationalists in any way. We just look at the brain and the human from the context of reality, which is the context that God sees humans in. And so now I realize we talk about psychology every day in all of our classes, really, especially at Calvary, because we talk about theology. Um, that has to do with man. So that's okay. kind of my big thing. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Um, yeah, so I'm from a ministry background, and so uh, 
saying that, I remember one of the first classes, Dr. Smith says, we're going to um, dive into these theories. And I'm thinking, well, all the people of these theories you're about to tell us about, are they saved? You know? Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but he said, what we're going to do is we're going to take these theories and we're going to sift it through the Bible. We're going to sift it through truth. And we're going to find the nuggets that come out and the skills and the tools that come out of that. And, uh, and then I'm like, okay, I can do that. I can do that. So, yes, there was some apprehension at the beginning. And, but then Dr. Smith totally uh, brought that to a ease and a comfort where I was comfortable going forward. So you're telling me I'm not a taskmaster teacher. I didn't say that. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, obviously, I'm still pretty new to the department, but something that I heard when I got here was that in Dr. Smith's classes, you are going to be singled out. And I was like, oh, no, I'm not signing up for that. And it, uh, you definitely do. You get singled out, and he asks you direct questions, and that has probably been one of the best things for me in that I, it breaks down a lot of pride of like, oh, I don't know if I have the right answer, or I want to make sure I have the right answer. It doesn't really matter. It matters if I'm seeking to learn and grow in the class. And so that has been something that is slowly breaking down, that it's OK to get singled out. It's OK to have those questions asked. And you end up learning a lot more from it than if you just sit there and are not wanting to be called on. See, the difficult <laughs> thing is, is when you give me an answer and then I give you another question. Yeah, and you're like, and oh, it just what? Keeps going. what? It just keeps Why? Going. I Why? Why? Right. I don't need right. another one. <laughs> um, first class, I was terrified. Um, oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, no, but over, because I was a year here before I took my first biblical counseling class, and all my friends that were in biblical counseling classes, they're like, oh, man, I got to get my Smith, work, Smith homework due on, done on time or I'm going to get a zero. <laughs> and uh, I've noticed that that is 100% true. You got to get your Smith homework in on time. But I have appreciated that because it forces me to actually apply myself. And it forces me to, even though some days when I don't wanna learn or some days where I'm not feeling like it, it forces me to learn and forces me to gain the information and I am better because of it. So I do appreciate the harsh due dates and <laughs> the lecture questions and all, all that. I do actually appreciate that a lot, so. Oh, good. Um, you have set, you have six other days. <laughs> um, uh, kind of changing and switching gears. Uh, again, I know Josiah. This is uh, you're kind of walking alongside of us, but I really like to get kind of your story too. Um, um, how did you become interested, um, either in becoming a counselor or um, taking? counseling courses? Um, what were some of the things that you were looking forward to in your own life kind of on this journey? I will start with Josiah this time, and then we'll work forward from there. Um, so biblical counseling, these classes are a part of my degree planner. So that is the reason yeah, you wouldn't have I took, took them. them. To. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, I was extremely excited to take these classes because I knew that as a pastor and down the road as a youth pastor and associate and then hopefully maybe senior pastor, teaching elder, whatever, um, I knew that there would be people coming to me with their problems and coming to me expecting me as the pastor to fix them. And I honestly still am terrified of that thought of being able to, people coming to me and trusting me to help them through their issues. Um, but the more, I, the more I go through these classes, it shows me that I don't have to fix anyone. I'm not the one who fixes anyone, but I trust in the God that does. Um, and that has really kind of changed my perspective a little bit about it um, and makes these classes 100% worth it. So I appreciate them. 
Um, I was not actually expecting to be in the biblical counseling department at all. I had no idea what I was going to do at Calvary. I knew I was coming here. And I was going to figure out a major when I got here. Mm -hmm. um, and I look back uh, throughout my life, and I just see all these things that I've been super blessed to be involved with directly lining up with uh, being able to be in the biblical, biblical counseling department. Um, especially one that stood out a lot to me was uh, I got to be part of a program in my hometown where they partner uh, older high school junior and seniors with uh, elementary schoolers who have lost a parent or a sibling um, and just an unexpected death especially. And looking back at just the hope that those kids are able to get in have, having someone to confide in, whether it's a professional counseling or not, just the hope that you can give someone by pouring God's love into them, whether you're directly saying, hey, this is what the Bible says, and God loves you, and this is why, or if you're just having a, forming a relationship with that person and saying, hey, uh, I'm, I know about this God, but I'm just going to share that love with you and share um, that with those kids. And that was definitely something that kind of sparked my interest in counseling and has evolved over time to be something that I never would have imagined. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, mine started when, um, kind of when I became a Christian. I was a 19 and getting ready to go to college. I had to de declare a major, and I'm like, well, you know, I had a little rough time in high school, and so, you know, I love to help kids through kind of that hard time, and um, so declared a psychology major. Um, end up going to a Christian college after that into Christian counseling um, major, and then uh, got married, had kids, um, so I kind of put it on the back burner, um, and really didn't know if I'd pick it up again, and then my youngest, I have four kids, my youngest was 15, uh, 16, just turned 16, got her driver's license, and I had so much time on my hands then, and I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm like, well, I might as well finish up my bachelor's. So I went back, finished up my bachelor's, and I didn't know what I was going to do after that. And I was talking to Dr. Smith, and I was kind of trying to figure out what I was going to do. And uh, it's really because of Dr. Smith and our conversation we had in your office about uh, going into the licensure program. It was brand new, just started. And, uh, and he took me through everything he said. And, you know, Dr. Smith is very personal, and uh, he said, Carol, I've seen your papers. I've seen what you can do. He goes, I know this program is a fit for you. And, uh, and so I was like, okay. Well, he had asked me, uh, like, through an email, and, and then then, and he was, uh, and then there was, I said, okay, Lord, after graduation, if, if Dr. Smith comes up to me and says it one more time that, it'd be a good fit for me, then, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. And so sure enough, right after graduation, I don't think I've shared this with you. Uh, it's new to me. Yeah. So. <laughs> right after graduation, we're all outside. We took this uh, picture together, and he looked at me and goes, well, what are you doing after this? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know. And he said, well, you should really think about the licensure program that we're starting. I said, well, that just answered it. So. My answer is super short and super easy. Uh, this has just been the thing that I have known I needed to do. I know that's kind of cliche. That's extremely cliche. But there are, I could make the story infinitely long and then it would be infinitely long. But that is the short summary of it. And that's that this is clearly, no matter how many times I've tried to change and do something different, God has never let me do it. So here we are. That's kind of the short answer to that. So, yeah. Very cool. One, uh, one last question I'd like to uh, ask you guys. Um, um, what are one, uh, it's kind of like the end of the class that we do, right? <laughs> what, is, uh, what is one or two things that you remember from your program or taking courses in the program? I know that you've just started. Um, um, but what is one or two things that you, that you either use or you are looking forward to using? Right, so either you're using it now or you're looking forward to using from the program. Let's start with Josiah on the very end and then we'll work forward from there. Well, I kind of have already said the two things that I have major two things that I've learned. And um, one is asking good questions. 
two is the importance of identity. Um, and I actually use those almost on a daily basis uh, with my work at House of Hope. Um, um, I, there, was a, there was a kid the other day that came up to me and was having some questions and I was able to remember what Dr. Smith had said about identity and use that in a way to explain the gospel to him in a different way that he hadn't heard before. Um, and I mean, it was, I, I got really excited and it was, it was really cool. Um, but um, it, was in, it was a way that made sense in a different way that he had never thought about before. Um, and then um, the questions, it comes in on a day-to-day -day basis. Like somebody asks you a question, you fire a question right back. It's really great. Um, but those, those two things, especially the importance of identity, um, is something I know that will shape the way I see people, the way I, I see myself, um, and the way I have conversations with people as well. Just seeing them as hum people that are made in the image of God, deserve respect, and deserve to be loved with the agape love that God shows us. So, thank you. I would definitely say that what Josiah said applies in my application of what I'm learning um, and things that I'm excited to use, but also the factor of that counseling is intentional in relational, is that it's not, oh, someone's going to come to you and you're just going to say off the top of your head what you know to say. It's you're going to intentionally form a relationship with that person because you desire to help them and you desire to see God's work in their life, and that that is something that I'm super excited to use and that I'm definitely seeing come to the fruits of my life right now of just being able to uh, intentionally pursue relationships with people who need help and who want to hear about hope and the good news of the gospel and to be able to incorporate that into just daily conversations with people too of just being intentional. Um, not every conversation is going to be a counseling conversation and not every conversation is going to be uh, professional in counseling, but still just having that desire to uh, be intentional in what I'm saying and listening um, has been really huge and really awesome to get, and I'm excited to use it. Excellent. Well, I think one of the classes that meant a lot and I use the most uh, in my master's program is um, helping skills. And helping skills, it helps you maneuver your uh, sessions. And whether it's listening and reflecting or summarizing or it just gives you a, a grip on, okay, how do we go from A to B. And uh, I think that's the class I, I really use the most of all. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think the, there's, I could list tens of things that I use every day, I feel like from just some of the classes I've done with Dr. Smith, but some of my friends will even be able to clearly tell you some, the two things that I use the most from Dr. Smith's classes. Um, the number one is, uh, what is reality? Um, and I, I ask that question all, a lot. <laughs> and so what is reality? Because reality, again, is the foundation of, you know, truth is reality revealed. And we find that in what God revealed in the Bible. And we find that in what we see in even just the organic nature of, of, of natural revelation. Um, what is reality? Uh, and then the uh, First Thessalonians 5, 11 through 17, which is the kind of the foundation of what we do. And so that's mm -hmm. admonished and really encouraged the faint hearted to help the weak, but above all, do all, do good to all people. And I use that every day in talking to friends. I use that every day when I'm talking to my clients. I use that every day to determine how I should address this person. Because uh, too often that happens in the reverse, where we want to admonish someone who is in a very broken spot or someone who is an organic issue and that is just not healthy it's not good practice uh, so that's the, those are the number two things and then the sub point to that one is the four c's of comfort and the five c's of confrontation oh my god those are the, ah! i use those every single day crazy connect con connect collect comfort continue and then if you have to confront someone connect 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 collect comfort 
confront continue. And that I use that. I, I have sometimes some parents want to meet with me and I talk to them for hour and a half sometimes if I lose my boundary of an hour, if I'm honest. And I will have gone through that system of those five C's ten yeah. times. And by the end, I have a, a mom who's understanding of her problems and understanding of where she's at, understanding of her worth, understanding of her value, but also of the ugly things that I have to share and the ugly things that I have to communicate about maybe an unhealthy com uh, you know, connection with her child or whatever. So, yeah, I use those things all the time. Oh, those, uh, that's four things. Sorry, Dr. Smith. Yeah, yeah. But there, there, there you go. go. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much um, for giving us your time to share how this has impacted you and how it is impacting you. And uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just totally grateful that, um, that, uh, that God has given all, really me the opportunity to lead you guys and guide you guys and, and, and see the fruit of that, really. It's, it's, it's incredible. So thank you guys so much. Um, let's go ahead and pray, and then uh, we will, uh, we will uh, close this out. Lord, thank you so much for your word. Your word really is truth, and we are just stewards of it. Um, we have the privilege of keeping it and teaching each other really about who you are, who we are, and how we ought to relate to each other, as particularly in the context of counseling. Thank you for, uh, for Josiah and for Nora, uh, for Carolyn um, and for Madeline and um, all those who are in this department. Um, I pray, God, that we would continue to build and equip and strengthen those who we have the wonderful privilege of serving um, in this capacity. Thank you again so much for who you are and for what you do. For it's in your son's name.